bulk of their losses. Now we've seen this September slip. What's going on and is the bull case for stocks still intact? Yeah, I think uh, we've seen quite some interesting market movements uh, to your point, Dan. From you know August, where we started off with the massive unwind of the carry trade and increasing worry of U.S. data getting softer, and then of course we get you know gradually slightly better data uh, out of the, uh, the tail end of August, and they're really you know with the Jackson Hole speech coming in, really reaffirming that we are now. Pretty much at the imminent start of the cutting cycle, that really, um, you know, helps stabilize volatility, helps risk um, assets performance a little bit. And now that we are going to September, which you know, to do to the earlier segments mentioned, historically has been challenging for for risky assets. I think where we are right now is um, this little bit of a balanced risk backdrop, where you know the Fed is uh, going to start cutting in the upcoming meeting in September. Um, like labor market is moderating, but not to the point where it deteriorated massively. Um, inflation is still about target, although it's cooling off, and uh, the overall GDP growth in the U.S. is still about trend. Um, so I think the overall risk allocation at this point is uh, pretty much near neutral with a little bit of the risk off uh, mixed in. So that's why uh, what we've seen in terms of recent market movements. And I think on the equity side is that, you know, the reason that we see still strong performance, uh, especially in the U.S., is that the, uh, the tech earnings has been relatively resilient, uh, I think better than people expected it to be. And that quality growth and cash flow that it provides still really justifies for its all performance that we've seen. Okay, you know, it's so interesting because in a lot of the conversations that I've been having over the last couple of weeks, you really do get the sense that markets need to see that cut in September to get a green light for further gains. And I think that's going to be really interesting to watch to determine whether or not that Fed cut is going to be a catalyst for more equity outperformance. So watch that space. But Yu Ting, of course, in order to get the cut, we need to see the data confirming the Fed's current trajectory. What do you think the latest jolts number means ahead of the NFP for the Fed? Yeah, I think the, the draws number is, well, compared to the non-farm payroll that we're about to get on Friday, it's a little bit of a second tier. But of course, I think at this point, with uh, Fed Chairman Powell has already stressed that, you know, he doesn't want to see too much deterioration in the labor market. And the non-farm payroll data we've seen has been pulling off. So there is this increasing worry of, okay, labor market is finally showing signs of weakness, how much further we're going to get. But I think based on what we've seen, is that a lot of the pricing in of the cuts, at least for the remainder of this year, has already factored in some deterioration of the labor market. So although you know the Fed is on data dependent data watch mode, um, unless we see massive deterioration of the non-farm payroll data that's coming up this Friday, um, I think the base case scenario is still for you know the Fed to start kicking off the cycle with a 25 basis point cut.